There were no signs of anything unusual at this public elementary school on this particular day. It would get unexpectedly interesting when a nine-year-old boy shouted this word. Police officers flooded the school in minutes after panicked personnel called for backup. It was terrifying. Everyone was anticipating the worst. How exactly did the situation unfold? Nick Johnson was a typical nine-year-old boy. He enjoyed going to school and had a happy family life at home. He was a single child and his parents wanted what was best for him. No one expected him to get into so much trouble for a seemingly small thing. He was suddenly at the center of attention just by shouting a word in the cafeteria. Nick was pretty popular at his school. Everyone loved him and wanted to be his friend. The reason was he was a good kid who could easily get along with everyone. No matter what a kid went through, Nick knew how to cheer them up. Many people would say he was just a typical nine-year-old, but after saying one word, some quickly turned on him. It seemed just like any other school day, nothing out of the ordinary, but then there was a huge commotion in the cafeteria. The supervising teacher pointed at Nick and discussed a situation. Nick had no idea what they had in plan for him. What was about to happen would probably scar him for life. A young teacher had heard a conversation Nick was having with his buddies while sitting at a cafeteria table and eating. She couldn't believe what the boy had just said. The young woman knew she had to make a decision about what to do. She quickly went to her superior and after discussing the issue further, they came to an unsettling conclusion. The teacher who overheard the conversation and her superior believed that the issue was as clear as day, but decided to get another opinion before doing anything. They both went to the principal and explained what had just happened, hoping for a final decision, and they got it. The problem seemed more severe than they anticipated. At that point, there was no turning back. The principal wanted to call the police. It only took minutes for the police to storm the school. A few cops came in and they were ready to settle the matter once and for all. The principal was waiting, eager to solve the situation. Police cars stopped in front of the school, making everyone wonder what was happening. Were they in some sort of danger? When children saw the police coming inside their school, they were all terrified. They thought something awful had happened. Nick had no idea that the police were called because of him. He was about to experience the shock of his life when the officers called for him, all because he shouted the word brownie in the cafeteria. Or was there more to it? The police asked for Nick Johnson and the boy went with him into a secluded room. They had told him they needed to ask him some questions. The boy was scared and had no idea why he was being questioned by the cops, but he had no choice. He had to comply with their demands, otherwise he might get into trouble, or so he thought. It was clear at that point. The boy realized that the cops had come for him. He still had no idea why, but he would soon find out. The officers asked him a question the boy didn't expect in a million years. He could barely remember the whole thing, but the police wanted to know exactly what had happened in the cafeteria. What exactly did he say? Apparently, the police were called because Nick had shouted the word brownie while talking with his friends in the cafeteria. This launched a chain of events that would end with a boy being held in questioning by police. The reason was that the teachers believed he was using the word as a racial slur addressed at some other children nearby. Nick's mother was called by the school to come in. It was about her son, so she left her office and rushed to go to school, unsure of what was going on. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these real-life stories every day. Now, back to the story. When she arrived, the mother was immediately approached by the cops telling her that Nick was in trouble. Then they proceeded to interrogate her as well while explaining the situation better. She wasn't expecting anything like this when she left for work that day. The mother wasn't sure why her boy was questioned by the police over such a minor thing. She wanted a good explanation from the school on why the heck they called the police. When the woman shared the story on the internet, it quickly went viral and many people agreed with her. It was just one word and they weren't even sure about all the circumstances, but their first reaction was to call the cops? It turned out that Nick used the word brownie when talking about their favorite desserts with the other kids at the table. Nick hadn't used the word to refer to the minority children sitting close by. It was all just a big misunderstanding but the school staff thought it was necessary to get police involved. The fact that the school involved the police in such a small dispute made Nick's mother question their choices. The ordeal was a nightmare for the boy, making the woman reconsider enrolling Nick into the same school the next autumn. She believed their reaction was extreme for such a situation. After a month of deliberation, she decided the school had gone too far. With every day that passed, she felt angrier instead of calmer. It got to a point where she couldn't take it anymore. She had to make sure this would never happen to another child again. She decided the best course of action was to take her son out of school. Her trust was broken and could never be established again. She'd find a good school for Nick to start all over with, but first she had to deal with a matter at hand, his old school. She would ultimately take legal action against the school. Of that, she was sure. All she had to do was come up with a plan. She'd never taken legal action against anyone before, but she wanted to for the sake of the children. She knew that the school would do this again if nothing changed. She needed to make them reconsider their actions. After a bit of searching, she managed to find legal counsel through a friend and started the discussion. She asked him what her options were and where they could go forward from there. 
The two of them came up with a plan that would leave the school shaking in their boots, but would it end well for her when she decided to take the fight to school? She was going to sue the school for defamation. They'd called the police on her eight-year-old son for speaking normally to his classmates. I bet they wouldn't have been alarmed if he used the word vanilla or any other dessert-themed word. And what did Nick think of all this? Nick had to question what he'd done wrong. Even though they reassured him he did nothing wrong, he still wondered why a police officer had picked him out of his classmates. It raised a lot of questions in his young mind. This was irreparable damage that would leave a lasting impact on Nick. It was something that his mother wouldn't take lightly. He asked his mother, Mom, why was it me? Don't worry, honey, they made a mistake. It has nothing to do with you, she reassured her son. But what else could she say if he didn't believe her? This could never be undone, but she could make sure it never happened to another boy or girl. She and her lawyer would make sure of that. The school district launched an internal investigation when Nick's mother decided to sue. This brought a lot more attention to the actions of the faculty. This was a positive thing because parents are always looking for things to scrutinize. If they have to launch internal investigations only after one mother decided to lawyer up, what kind of school is this? One parent wrote online. With Nick's mother beyond nervous about her case against the school, she was pleasantly surprised to find that public opinion was on her side. Parents were starting to see the context surrounding what had happened to her son. They were on her side, but the battle wasn't over yet. She had to try and put the school in its place by taking the only thing that mattered to them, money. After fighting long and hard, they'd finally heard the facts from both sides and said they'd be giving their verdict. Her heart leapt in her chest. She crossed her fingers and closed her eyes as they answered. What the judge said would have her head spinning and tears filling her eyes. She'd won the defamation case. The school would have to compensate young Nick for the damages against him. It was a lot of money for a young child, but she knew just what to do with it. She watched as the figure drained from her bank account. Where did she decide to put it? She put the money in a savings account that would generate compound interest over the next decade. She would make sure that the small fortune went untouched until he was 18. Then he could hopefully use it to buy a modest house or pay for extra tuition. Whatever it would be for, she was happy to have that security for her son. After successfully winning the legal battle, the school gave Nick a formal apology, but it was too late. Many parents pulled their children out of the school and nothing could repair the PR damage that had been done. But what about young Nick? What would he do now that he was out of school? Well, his mother would make sure his future was bright. During the entire battle against the school, Nick's mother had been doing a lot of research on the best schools in the area. After looking at four, she finally found one that seemed to be just what Nick needed. She enrolled him in the school for the following summer, but would he be happy there? It was an uneasy first semester, but Nick soon got used to the new environment and made new friends quickly. He was back to his normal self and never thought about the incident at his old school. They could finally move forward without fear of the school doing irreparable damage to him. He was set up for a bright future.